Uh, hi, here we are with Carrie Millsap, one of the speakers uh, at our next virtual conference about systematic Oracle uh, SQL tuning in or optimization in 2020. And, uh, you know, the last similar conference with the same speakers we did in 2010. So plenty of things have um, changed. Uh, hi, Carrie. Hi, Tanel. So before you go, I want to ask you a question. You did something just now that I noticed. You used the word tuning. And then you changed the word to optimization. Why did you do that? Uh, yeah, I mean, tuning is the marketing version. It's it just resonates and rings a bell whether let's tune something, but uh, yeah. but optimization is really you know what we what we do. You know, we want to make things more efficient as opposed to finding the optimal value for some magic parameter, which suddenly makes your radio go from the background hiss to a signal, yeah. right? You know, yeah. So that's what people think about tuning, but really, what it is, it's about optimization, right? And uh, right. Uh, and with that, uh, you know, um, let's, um, you know, I want to ask you the two questions. And one question is that, uh, you know, ten years ago, um, in your tuning and optimization <laughs> world, um, what was the most um, common question that got asked from you? And what is it now, twenty years? Well, not twenty, ten years later. And um, what are what were the answers? If there is any different, 20, uh, 20 dog years, ten yeah. dog years. Um, yeah, I the the questions I get are mostly the same, surprisingly, and I think it's because of the layer that I operate at. You know, whereas somebody that works in a more detailed way with DBAs than I do might say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Back then, it was all you know, the 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 bug with the Oracle optimizer that caused too many hash joins to take place or something. I I tend to stay kind of higher up in the in the hierarchy of how I pay attention to a system. And the questions I get now are really pretty much the same as the questions I used to get then, um, which is, you know, we've tried everything, our dashboard dials are all green, but our users hate something about our system. You know, maybe our nightly batch job is supposed to run in a six hour window, but now it's running for seven and a half hours. So our, we're having to pay fines to our customers, or maybe it's our month end close takes two days, but all my dashboard dials are green. You know, so when, when I get called is typically after people have used um, AWR and OEM and, and maybe tools from other vendors, and they're still confused about why this transaction takes longer, why this user experience or this report takes longer than, uh, than we wanted to. And that really, for all of the 10 years, has stayed pretty stable for me. All right. So, and um, uh, like, um, what about the method and the tools and, the, you know, has there been any change or how people use, what yeah. methods and tools people want to use? Well, I'll tell you one thing that, that you and I haven't talked about, but we're, we're getting ready to release... Um, so the, my my real job is is writing this method R workbench software, and it started off. So ten years ago, if you'd asked me what method R workbench software did back then, it was called method R profiler, um, and it would eat one trace file and emit one HTML file, kind of like TK Prof, except much better, much faster. Mm -hmm. um, now we have the profiler is just a feature, a tiny feature inside this thing called a workbench, and we can ingest thousands of trace files in just a few minutes and search among those thousands of trace files for things that are interesting. Like if you wanted to know, uh, hey, can a library cache miss happen on an exec call? Well, you probably mm -hmm. know the answer, but some people like, they need proof. Well, I can find you which lines in, in millions and millions of lines of trace data where that kind of thing occurs. Or I can tell you, um, you know, the nightly batch job thing. I can draw you a Gantt chart of how all of the processes work together and mm -hmm. which ones are serialized, which ones are parallelized. And when you see a gap in the Gantt chart, that's a place where the application tier is doing work, but the database isn't doing work. And you can yeah. see those things vividly. Whereas 10 years ago, I would have had to have imagined or worse yet, I have to imagine it. And then I have to try to teach you how to imagine the same picture that's in my head yeah. in order to teach the client. Um, so the, the tools have changed a lot. And, and the thing we've really been focusing on is making it so that if you were to trace the system for an hour or six or eight hours, um, we can help, we can find things really quickly and map them back to ash data if we need to. Yeah. Um, and, and that's what we've been working on a lot in the last 10 years that has changed a lot.
Yeah, because it's not always as simple and it's never been as simple as just, hey, there is one session or this whole database that is either fast or slow, right? It's a right. whole, you may have a batch job which runs, say, 25 connections doing something and then all of them wait for one session who has right. to finish something, right? And then the whole 25 go on again, right? And how do you find, you know, where this uh, bottleneck really is, you know, at this higher exactly. level, right? And and there are all these all these ways that you can multiplex at different layers mm -hmm. now, right? Now there's connection yeah. pooling. So now your trace file contains stuff from different people. And how do we isolate just one yeah, thing? Yeah. And some people some people use the parallel, you know, the the declarative par parallel features in Oracle. Some people write their own parallel stuff, right? Yeah. They'll yeah. really like, you know, shard in their mm -hmm. own code. And yeah. every every time somebody takes something that that used to be a unit and turns it into okay, we're going to chop it all up and send it to different machines and or at least different CPUs on the same machine, it, it makes measuring a lot more complicated. Yeah, but it's we, hard to get the full. It. Yeah, it's hard to get the full picture, right? Exactly. So. Yeah. Okay. So, and the second question is, uh, can you uh, tell us a little bit about your talk and um, you know what's in there? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I really. I mean, I fall in love with every every most recent presentation I've ever done. You know, it's like the most fun presentation I've ever done. But I say that, you know, the last 20 presentations I've made, I've said it about all of them. Um, this one is the, um, it, it's to bring perspective to people. I think you've got me in the first slot, right? So I, I get to yeah, kind of yeah, like, for a reason, the field, right? <laughs> and then you guys get to plant the seeds in the field that I, that I plow. But, um, I don't know. For for all my life, I've really, or all my professional career, I've been focused, kind of in this in this spectrum of of, you know, tasks around being a DBA or system administrator, system manager, or developer. So there's kind of the whole stack between people that write the code and people that run the code. And whereas most of my life, I've been kind of focused on helping to make individual experiences run faster. There is the question of, well, how big does my machine to be, need to be? Or how many cloud credits do I need to buy? And we know you and I, you and I both know that when you make some program run faster, it makes a big difference whether that program just runs once a day or if that program runs a thousand times a minute. Right? The the real gold mine is when when we find something that runs a thousand times a minute and we can make it twenty percent faster. Yeah. Right. That's tons better than a program that runs once a month and we make it twice as fast. Yeah. You know. Because and 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 you and I both understand the impact that a program that runs a lot has on a system but i think a lot of people that i meet they don't really get it they don't really understand the model for how could tuning one thing a little bit there's that marketing word tuning how could that make such a huge difference and the answer is well if it runs a lot and it represents a significant part of your load then making an improvement on that is going to have a, a big effect that people that maybe don't even run that program can feel and so my presentation is is at the highest level of how do you decide what to fix next and how can you predict when you fix something what effect might it have on something else on the system and I, it's it's a real simple excel model and it starts with understanding response time um the way that that we look at it through the lens of trace data where you can see the entire code path executing and um well the ability to answer questions like I've seen people upgrade like an IO subsystem to a system that's maybe twice as fast. And users around the water cooler hear, oh, they're gonna upgrade the IO subsystem mm -hmm. and it's gonna be twice as fast. So yeah. everything I do is gonna be twice as fast. Yeah. And the answer is no, probably nothing you do is gonna be twice as fast because nothing that you do is pure 100% IO. Maybe if your thing spends half its time doing IO, maybe it'll be 25% faster. Yeah. And Trying to explain to people why that's the case is sometimes hard. So I start with that question, um, kind of surround the question like if a vendor tells you everything is going to be X percent faster, it's probably not true. And it's not because they're liars or they're dirty. It's just mathematically inevitable that it can't make everything yeah. twice as fast if you buy a twice as fast component. So I show that and then I kind of build into the kind of the capacity planning task of figuring out, all right, how much stuff can I put on my system? And it's a fun yeah. presentation. It, it kind of recalls some stuff that we all learned back in primary school. You know, the yeah. in particular yeah. Yeah. there's some stuff that I learned in fourth grade that that really kind of gives the, the ability to do what I'm going to show. Yeah.
And I think, yeah, your talk will be perfect for, you know, as a, as a first talk of this whole conference. And, uh, you know, hopefully it will help to set the right mindset. And then we all start drilling down deeper into, into yeah. or other speakers into uh, lower level details. Right, right. Okay, I think that's it. Uh, so uh, thanks very much and see you all in, in April then. Look forward to it. Thank Thanks, Tanel.